Saul, King Saul. Mm. And King Saul had failed to obey God's laws and God's instructions. Yeah. And God said to King Saul, he said, in 1 Samuel 13, 14, you got your Bible there on your tablet, don't you? No? I'm actually it's recording a... you. Oh, you are recording me. That's sad. <laughs> okay. <laughs> First Samuel got it, 13, 14 says, But now your kingdom shall not continue. The Lord has sought out a man after his own heart, and the Lord has commanded him to be prince over his people because you have not kept what the Lord commanded you. That was first time you went. 13, 14. Okay. The one we're doing. And then, and then to support that, we go clear back to Acts 13. In the, in, in, the, in the New Testament, in Acts, Paul and Barnabas are at the church in Antioch, and they're talking, and they're telling what happened in history. It's because King David's long gone from the history. But King David is the most famous king that ever lived, ever. And they're explaining it. it says, then they asked for a king, and God gave them Saul. See, he's saying the people asked for a king, God gave them Saul. And Saul, the son of Kish, the man from the tribe of Benjamin, for 40 years. And when he had removed him, he raised up David to be their king, of whom he testified, he said, I have found in David, the son of Jesse, a man after my own heart who will do all my will. Okay? Mm -hmm. So, here we got, now we got this King David who God says is a man after his own heart. And we assume he's pretty sharp. He, he, he you know, but, but he made a number of mistakes in his life. The one we usually think about, David, is Bathsheba. He uh, got his eyes in the wrong place and lusted after a gal and uh, had got in trouble there. He also, another big one, uh, which is further back, uh, he talks about God told King David never to take a census of the people in Israel. Yep. He said, Basically, God is telling me, I will supply the kingdom. I will give you what you're supposed to have. I will make your kingdom as big as I want it. It's not you, and it's not what you have done. And don't take a census. Don't number the people. And David numbered the people. And he got in trouble. He got in trouble. And there was like 700,000 men, and that don't count women and children. And because of it, the, the Lord gave a plague to Israel, and 40,000 men died mm. because of that sin. All because of David's sin. Yes. Yep. Got it. Now, this is, this, is, this is one of the stories of his mistakes, and it was impressed me a lot. And if you're in First Samuel 27, go back. First Samuel. Uh, I, I we're not going to read this whole thing because it, because it is very long. But I do want to make a couple of notes in the very beginning here. David. David had been fighting, uh, trying to defend himself, been running from Saul. Saul wanted to kill him. Because he knew that David was going to become the king, and Saul was going to stay king, and he was trying to kill David. And David had been running, and he ran, and he ran, and hid in the cave, and he did all kinds of things. Yeah, I remember that. First Samuel 27. Okay? And David was tired. He really got tired. But David, not only was it David, but David had 
a whole miniature army. Mm -hmm. He had, I believe it's 600, don't forget my big friend. I think he had 600 men with him, and that did not count the men's wives, families, or children. Okay? But if we start out in 1 Samuel, this is this is where I want to start. Samuel 27, 1. Oh, and David said in his heart, Now I shall perish one day by the hand of Saul. Okay? Now I want to call your attention to, he says, I shall perish one day. At the hand of Saul. There is nothing better for me than that I should escape to the land of the Philistines. There is nothing better for me. It's I. I get what you're driving It's at. me. Yeah. I will escape to the land of the Philistines. And I shall escape into out of his hand. I shall escape out of his hand. So David arose and went over he and the 600 men who were with him. So David went to the Philistines. He moved over to the Philistine camp. Who was Goliath? Philistine. Mm -hmm. And was, David. It, it was, he, David was tired of running from Saul. And he went over to the Philistine camp. He went to the enemy's yeah. camp to hide. Mm -hmm. And he got over there. And the king says, oh, you're a good guy. And David says, I will work in your army. I'll head out people. I'll, I will do it. And David and his men would go and raid villages. Mm -hmm. Now, these villages were in a, a neutral territory or a war leading towards Israel, mm -hmm. but not Philistine villages. Mm. But when he raided these villages, he killed everyone, men, women, and child. He left nobody behind because he didn't want anybody to be able to tell him what he did. Mm -hmm. No, it was the witnesses. He killed them mm. all. And he would come back to Achish, which was the king, and he'd say, oh, I've been out doing this and doing this and doing this for you, king. Mm. And he was lying. Here's a, here David, a man after God's own heart, <laughs> had go, went across the line into the into the enemy's camp. And now he's fighting pretty much his own people or some neutral people and claiming it to be for the for the enemy king. Mm. And go, things were going along real good. Went that way for a long time. And pretty soon, the Philistines decided they were going to take, go to the Israelites. And they were going to kill some of the Israelites. And David says, I'm ready to go to battle with you. And Achan says, you have been a faithful servant. I know. You can go. You can go to battle with us. But the captains of the Philistines said, there is no way. He's going to get out there in that battlefield and he's going to see his brothers and sisters that we're trying to kill. And he's going to change his heart. Mm -hmm. And he, the, the the thing was, the Israelites, <laughs> the Israelites said, Saul killed his thousands, mm -hmm. but David killed his ten thousands. Mm -hmm. He says, he's going to turn on us mm -hmm. and we are no match for him and his 600 men. Mm. And they said, he can't go. Mm. Well, the king, Achish, had given David and his men a town. The town was called Ziklag. Mm -hmm. He gave them that village and said, this is a village you can live in. You and your men and their wives and their kids and the whole thing. You can live in Ziklag. So David was out trying to go to battle. And they said, no, you can't. The captain won't let you. You can't go to battle with us. You need to return to your village. So David and his 600 men returned to Ziklag. And when they got there, another enemy of the Philistines had raided the city of Ziklag. Had burnt the city to the ground. 
took all the women and all the children and all the animals and anything else that they could carry and carried it all off. Now David and his 600 men come back to a pile of ashes. Mm -hmm. And it says, the scripture tells us further on in 20 something, that the men and David wept mm -hmm. until there were no more tears to weep. Mm -hmm. They wept so bitterly that there was nothing left in them to, to weep. And at that point, his men are angry they say, our wives are gone, our kids are gone, our stuff's gone. And they threaten to stone David to death. But then the passage goes on. I wish I had highlighted it, but it goes on to say, but David encouraged himself in the Lord. Mm -hmm. David had reached the low point. I have sinned, I have done this, I've caused this trouble, I've brought shame upon my men. Our families are gone. We got nothing. And David finally says, I got to go back to God. I got to go back to the Lord. And David encouraged himself in the Lord. And then he sought counsel. And when he sought counsel, he said, do I go after these people that have raided our village? And they said, the Lord told him, yes, you go after them and you will recover all and they went after him and they found him having a big party in the down in the valley they were all getting drink and stuff <laughs> and they were all having a big party scattered out all over the place and david and his 600 men went in and captured all of their wives got all of their wives all of their children and all of their goods and everything they got as well as getting the camels and the animals and the goods from the raiders they carried his family out. So he got back everything plus more. Mm -hmm. But the thing I'm saying is we get discouraged. My son-in-law just lost his bar. The snow color caved in. We saw a picture last night. <clears throat> he was sitting at home just last night hanging his head. He's discouraged. We find ourselves, all of us, I do, doing things I shouldn't do, being tempted, going places that I shouldn't go, saying things I shouldn't say. I'm angry at somebody and I say nasty words. I don't know that anybody did anything worse than David did. We went through, I'm sure Kim has shared some thoughts with you about what she went through mm -hmm. about the death. Mm -hmm. We went through those very dark days. It would be easy to get discouraged. But what we got to do, what David did, is encourage yourself in the Lord. Go back to God. Mm -hmm. I stood with my son-in-law this morning and my grandson. I went over there at 8 o'clock this morning, and we stood there, and I we held hands. And I said, we don't understand why his barn had the snow caved roof in, crushed my truck, his truck, his grandson's truck, all of his tools. It's his all crushed. Truck. It's all crushed over there. And they, they spent the whole day trying to dig out a couple of vehicles from under a crushed barn. We don't understand those things. We don't understand why God allowed us to go through the things that we went through in Bar Gaudet, the struggles that Kim has been through. And struggles, I'm sure there's been struggles in your gal's life. I don't know what they are, and that's but we get <laughs> discouraged. And we can say there's nothing better to do than to go to the enemy's side. Mm. That's easy, isn't it? Mm. To go to just pack up, go over mm. and hide in the enemy's side. Mm. I'll just go hide with the guys that drink at the bar and whatever the heck. And, and I'll just, you know, nobody will find me. And so David said, they're, they're not going to find me. But it catches up. But God is standing there all the time, standing right there, saying, come to me. Encourage yourself in the Lord. David encouraged himself. 
Did you see that? Did you find it? Was, where that was? <laughs> where, the, where David encouraged himself in the Lord? <clears throat> uh, I don't know. <clears throat> it could be. First Samuel. David, David 30. Was, David 36. 36. First Samuel 36. And David was <laughs> yeah. greatly distressed. For the people spoke of stoning him. Because all the people were bitter in soul. These people were bitter in soul. Each for their own sons and daughters. But David strengthened himself in the Lord. His God. Yeah, then it says encouraged. Yeah. So the thing that I'm saying is if the guy who is the man after God's own heart, the man that God knew was capable, David always, as much as he did, mistakes he made. Mm -hmm. He always came back and said, Lord, I have sinned mm -hmm. and I'm here. Please forgive me. And the Lord will strengthen him. Mm -hmm. and, yes, and, and carry him. So that's Amen. Just, just for you girls tonight. Thank I mean, you. it's just, it's just a thought that uh, that's one of the stories of David that I really enjoy because it's. I had a pastor. I'll tell you. I'll tell you this. I had a pastor. We were trying to raise support to go to the mission field, and I would go out find a Baptist church because we're Baptists. Okay. <laughs> And I'd find a Baptist church, and I'd find a Baptist church, and I'd go in and talk to the pastor and say, I'd like to come and share what we're doing going to Bangladesh, because we need support. <clears throat> and I had a pastor that said to me, he said, yeah, I, I, I'll, I'll, uh, I'll let you come. And he said, do you like to read? And he picked up a paperback book, and he threw it across the table and said, here. And it was a book that he had written, and it was called... David, a man after God's own heart, is David something. Mm. That know. is the name of that book. Mm. And 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 he wrote the opening line in that book was, "David is the heights to which a sinner can climb, sorry, and the depths to which a saint can fall." Yeah. David was a. Did you hear that? A saint. No, I didn't. I'm sorry. Can you say that again? David so was good. a perfect example of. The heights to which a sinner can climb, and the depths to which a saint can fall. Mm -hmm. We think we got it, God. We think we've committed ourselves to Christ, but we can fall. Oh yes. But we also, with God's help, can climb to the heights that God wants us to go. The depths, and and the next time I went back to that church to speak. That pastor had been removed for having an affair with the secretary. No. Yeah. And he wrote the book, <laughs> The Depths to Which a Saint Can Climb. And then. Senator Kennedy. Yeah. Yeah, really. Because he gave the book. And he gave me the book, and I love the book, and I studied that yeah. book. And, and he's. But isn't that who the enemy goes after? That's right. The enemy. Is the if one you're. The, <clears> the harder you're <throat> trying to live for God, mm -hmm. the harder. Satan's gonna make it. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Like Ron, like Ron across the street. I mean, he's mm -hmm. got a daughter that's going to the mission field. He's working. He works in the church, and, mm -hmm. and his whole barn falls. So. He doesn't have a truck to work with now. Yeah. Well, you know, you just you just say, okay, Satan, you're not gonna win. That's right. Yeah. yeah. Because, we thank God for the for the caved in roof. Said so we don't understand it, but we thank you. And thank you for the sunshine day and ask to protect us for the work we were doing today. Give you closeness, more closeness with your family to rebuild it. Yeah. yeah. So. And I believe, you know, there's protection and things too. I mean, someone could have been in there. Oh, yes. You know, thank God no one was hurt. So, no but anyhow. Yeah, I, I don't no, you're right. Because everybody. <laughs> right. So, yeah, right nobody was out padding around the garage because right. it was you didn't lose an inch No, machinery and all that yeah. stuff can be. Right, and those can be everything.